Hi, Dr. Shore again. I'm going to talk a little bit about sperm morphology. What is it? What can it tell us? And what can it tell us? Sperm morphology uh, implies the shape of the sperm. A normal sperm will be oval, have a cap on the end of it called the acrosome, which is approximately one third of the size of the head itself. We'll have, the sperm will have a mid-piece section, which will be rectangular in shape, and will have a tail. An abnormality in, in the tail, the mid-piece, the head, or the cap will make the sperm have an abnormal morphology. The morphology test is, uh, in most labs, assessed by a human being. Basically, the human being looks at the sperm under high power uh, magnification and will look at the, uh, the shape of the head, the, its width, the shape and width of the acrosome cap, the midpiece, and the tail. And will make an assessment, a judgment, basically, that the sperm is normal or abnormal. Uh, there are computer-aided systems that could do this as well. Depending on what criteria you use or how strict you are, uh, more or less sperm will be considered abnormal. The most strict form of morphology is called the Kruger or WHO fourth edition morphology test. This is the most strict form of morphology. In this particular test, um, uh, often you see 5-10% maximum of the sperm will be considered, quote, normal. Uh, what this actually means, though, is uh, unclear and not so much for uh, the day-to-day -day evaluation management of the infertile man. What it does mean is that if on strict morphology assessment, the uh, uh, number of normal forms or normal sperm is 4% or less, if the couple is going to go for in vitro fertilization or intracytoplasmic sperm injection, if they have less than 4% of normal forms, they should go for a uh, ICSI as opposed to a standard in vitro. I personally use uh, a less strict form of morphology called a WHO3. Uh, this I find useful uh, in the sense that if the per percentage of sperm that are abnormal by WHO3 is elevated, it may be a sign that a condition exists that needs to be detected, evaluated, or treated in the man. Such conditions can be uh, smoking, uh, exposure to environmental toxicants, and occasionally, about 4 to 5 percent of the time, the man will have an unsuspected malignancy. So, this test can be helpful to rule that out, or to at least uh, tell the urologist that a condition might exist in the man that needs to be evaluated and diagnosed. Again, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you, and any other questions, please feel free to contact me. Thanks a lot.